Hi, my name is Danny James, and this is the Ambassador Pools Pool School Show. First of all, I want to congratulate you on your brand new kayak pool. You purchased one of the most maintenance-free, longest-lasting pool products in the world. Today, I'm going to go over a couple small features, and even though this is the most maintenance-free pool system on the planet for this climate, it's very important that you do the small amount of work required because if you do, it's very easy and it's a breeze. And if you don't, the stuff piles up and it can be, you know, a bit of a nightmare. Um, the first thing I want to talk about just generally is pride of ownership and taking care of your product. So I've actually owned one of these pools myself for 10 years now. I've been doing this for about 17 years, believe it or not. And over the years, I've noticed that the pools that have the most problems are the ones that really aren't taken care of. So every year when you close your pool, open your pool, work on your pool, it's very important to make sure every piece of dirt and dust stays off this thing. Keep it as protected as you can. Any of the threads in between components, in between plumbing parts, make sure you keep them free of debris and spider eggs and dust and, and anything else that's going to really jam them up and you can get 20, 30 years out of this system. It's the best on the planet. So the very first thing I'm going to go over is how to turn on your pool. Now we have an on off switch that's really simple and really basic, but what you can do is either get an electrician to hardwire a timer, or you could buy a timer on Amazon or at Home Depot or any other hardware store, connect it directly to the plug so that you can set this pool to run on its own. Now, ideally you want to get it to the point where it's running five or six hours a day or the minimum time available so that the pool water stays clear. That's all we need. Anything more than that is overkill. And we'll address water chemistry and, and chlorine at some point in the, later in this video or a different video. But um, every pool is a different environment depending on how much it's used, how many people are using it, and the environment around the pool like the plants, the trees, the shade, the sun. So some pools are going to need a lot more uh, runtime and some pools are going to need a lot less runtime. Uh, in the beginning, when you first get your pool, it's not uncommon to want to run these things for 24, 48 hours straight or when you open the pool just to get the chlorine running through the system and get the pool clear. Once the pool's clear and you have it kind of at an even keel, you can try and find the balance of the lowest time. And again, I typically run mine for six hours a day. So when it comes to the Pentair PLM cartridge system, the way it works is it's a big cylindrical cartridge with pleats that make the max square footage for it to catch as much debris as possible and still allow as much water as possible through the pool. There's really only three things that you have to do on this system on a regular basis. And by regular basis, I mean maybe once every two to three weeks on my pool because I don't have a lot of trees, I find myself doing this stuff once a month. So I literally spend 10 minutes once a month other than vacuuming. As far as vacuuming is concerned, I might do it twice a month and, and take 15 minutes twice a month. So your total month's work should be an hour's time over 30 days. Other pools, you can be out there an hour to two hours every single day and it can be a nightmare. A lot of people want to get a pool and think you just put the pool in and it runs and you're golden and there's nothing you have to do. Um, and that's not the case. You really just have to make sure you do the bare minimum possible when you have to do it. And then if you don't, like I said, it's going to build up, the water's going to turn green, the cartridge is going to get ruined, and it can be a ton of work trying to get it back. So just follow these really simple steps to keep the pool clean and active, and it really is a breeze. Now, if at any point in time you have any questions about any of the things we have going on in this video, please feel free to reach out to us on our website. We have a service request section. Uh, keep in mind, we only service pools that we sell or install. Uh, even if it's a product that we didn't install and, and someone has, we'll still service it. But the way we process service is through the website on the menu section. Uh, it says submit service and it allows us to stay organized and um, you know keep everybody happy and make sure everybody's taken care of. So when it comes to the filter in general, there's only three things that you have to take care of. The first being the skimmer basket. Now you have a skimmer basket on the pump 
and you also have a skimmer basket on the wall, the square hole that the water comes into. Both of these baskets should be checked on a regular basis and emptied whenever possible. It's okay if there's a little bit of stuff in there, but if there's a lot, you wanna make sure that's not impeding the water flow through the pool so that everything can really be as efficient as possible. Now inside this big, giant, scary looking tank right here is a big cylindrical cartridge, which I'll show you in a minute. And again, about once every three weeks, depending on how much the pool is being used and how much stuff is going through, and really depending on the reading on this pressure gauge, you have to make sure this cartridge is cleaned, and I'm gonna take you through how to do that. And then the third thing is the chlorinator here, which we call the pool frog. The chlorine packs, uh, it, it really consists of two packs. You have a, a green pack, which I'll show you, and an inside chlorine pack. The green mineral pack has to be changed once a season, and then the inside pack can be anywhere from two to four weeks, depending on, again, how much the pool is running. Now, if you run the pool 24 hours a day constantly, then the chlorine's just gonna run out eventually uh, a lot sooner than it has to. If you run the pool as little as humanly possible, you should have to only replace these things, again, every two to four weeks, depending. And you should keep an eye on how much chlorine is in here at all times because you'll get a sense of how often they have to be changed, which is different on every site. So again, only three main things other than vacuuming. Make sure the chlorine cartridges are changed, the inside cartridges on a regular basis. Make sure the two skimmer ba uh, baskets are empty and then make sure the cartridge in the filter is cleaned. That's it. If you do those three small steps, it's a very easy pool to take care of. So if you wanna come in right here, I'm gonna explain a little bit about this thing right here we call the ball valve. So the kayak pool is a lot different than most pools because most above ground style pools do not have bottom drains. And that's why there's such a hassle to keep clean. Everything that floats below the surface and makes it to the ground will stay there until you get it out. Now the great thing about the kayak pool is it processes all the small particles through the bottom drains and actually collects all the big particles that it can't process right around the bottom drains. So it makes vacuuming a lot easier. You're just vacuuming one pile opposed to you know the entire pool and it's a very slow process. So the ball valve here in the center of the system controls the flow from the bottom drains here the sidewall skimmer, the top wall skimmer, which is where it cleans everything off the top, and then the flow directly to the pump. Now the beautiful thing about the ball valve is you can close off any flow of the pool to the system itself. Now when you want to vacuum the pool, you want all the power and all the suction to be coming from the top wall skimmer because that's where the vacuum hooks in from. And to do that, you want to close the side that goes to the bottom drains. So to figure out which pipe is the bottom drains, you just follow the hose right back into the pool and see which one goes directly under the pool. It's pretty easy to see. And sometimes it can help to mark it with a marker so that you know which one to close in the future. So if I'm gonna vacuum the pool, I'm gonna close off this side here and everybody gets confused sometimes and thinks that it's whichever way the, the handle is pointing, but it's actually where it's actually marked closed. So if it says closed here, there's a little wall under this ball valve that just blocks off that whole pipe and allows the water to come straight in through the top wall skimmer into the system. So now instead of 50% coming from here and 50% coming from here, you're gonna get 100% flow right into the cartridge and back into the pool, which is why you wanna close off one side because the vacuum's hooked up to this side. Now, anytime you're working on the filter, it's very important that you close off all the water pressure to the filter itself. So now both of these are open, but they're both hitting this closed point. And the other thing you wanna keep in mind is there's a little handle right here that allows you to tighten this down so it doesn't move. And really, anytime you wanna move this thing, you just loosen it up a little bit so you can move it. And then when you have it where you want it, just tighten it back into place. It's very important that when you tighten this back into place, you don't crank it or, or tighten it with a wrench because it will get stuck and it's very hard to get loose. Really simple, just treat this stuff very easily hand loosen and hand tighten. So now that we have the uh, flow closed to the, the pump itself and the rest of the filter, 
I'm going to show you how to drain the filter tank so that we can work on the skimmer basket, the frogger, and the filter tank itself. So, like I said, the first thing we do is close off and make sure close is pointing to the pump skimmer itself. And the next thing we're going to do is drain the filter basin. Once you close off the flow for the ball valve to the filter itself, on a lot of other pools, you have to make sure that you take a plug and put it in the return. The amazing thing about this filter is there's a spring-loaded check valve that stops all the flow automatically from the other side, so you don't have to run back and forth to the pool to make sure the flow is blocked from the other side. So if you've had another pool before and you have to screw that return plug into the return, don't worry about it on this pool for now. So another thing I want to say is the most important tool you could have as a homeowner for this pool is a giant pair of vice grips. This thing uh, really will keep you from having to call us and, and pay ha to have someone come out and repair or tighten or loosen anything. When these pools are brand new, some of the stuff can be stuck and it's hard to get loose by hand. And a giant, the biggest pair of vice grips they make at any given hardware store is something you always want to keep on hand, as well as a, a bunch of sh uh, small bags of shock and a power washer, a uh, cheap small power washer, which we'll talk about in a minute. So now that we've closed off the flow, this tank is still full of water. And to be able to get to any part of this pool, we have to drain this tank because if we don't, if we go to open the chlorinator or the uh, skimmer basket on the pump, all that water is going to come spitting out. So a lot of times this can be loosened by hand. Because this is a brand new pool, I know it's going to be tight, so I have my handy pair of vice grips here. And another thing I want to address real quick is because it's a new pool, the landscaping hasn't been done here, the best thing you could ever do around a filter on any pool is put some small gravel or stone all around this area because when I open this up to drain out the excess water from the tank, it's going to go on the ground. It's going to get a little dirty and messy. You want to make sure you're not standing directly in front of it so you don't, don't get blasted by water. Uh, but when you have gravel here, it keeps everything clean and everything tight. So I'm going to start by loosening this dial here just to let the water out and it loosens right up and then I should be able to loosen it by hand. Yep, not yet. Loosen it a little bit more just to be safe. Now I'm going to take this out and you're going to see this water come right out. Now before I take this plug out, on the top of this tank is an air release valve and there's two purposes of this really to let the air in here and you're going to hear it hiss right when I open it up. And you'll hear it hiss a lot more when I open the plug and also to let the air back out when we prime the system and run water back through it after we clean the cartridge itself. So now I'm going to open this plug and let the water out. Here it comes. Get ready. Not as catastrophic as I thought it would be. So you can hear the air actually hissing through the air relief valve here. The more I open it, the bigger the stream of water is going to get to the point where I can really release it out fast. I'm not going to do that to my camera guy. So I'm just going to let it drain nice and slow. Because I've been doing this so long, I know that I don't have to let every single drop of water out of here. It's starting to get lower. Once it gets below this halfway point, we're good to go. I don't have to waste all the water. And this is also a way to drain the pool if you have too much water in the pool and the water is way too high. The great thing about this system is the vacuum hose that we give with the pool actually fits right into this hole and you can direct the flow of water wherever you want. So I'm going to close this back up now because I know the water is definitely low enough. And you can stick this right back in here even when the water is coming out. You just have to find that thread point sometimes. All right, so the next part is opening the posi lock ring that's at the center of the tank here. So if you want to come around this side, I'll show you where the lock ring is. All right, so on the back side is a little ring here or a little button that says push. And this really just keeps the ring locked in place. When you push this forward, you can start to loosen that ring and it'll come loose. Now, a lot of times uh, people will push this too hard and it'll snap right off. And believe it or not, it's a really cheap part. And it's not even necessary to have on this pool. It just kind of makes everything 
um, you know, lock in place and make sure everything's tight. But if this does break, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Uh, I actually went a couple years without even having this piece on my pool and it's not something that's really detrimental to the filter system. Once you pushed it, the ring is loose. You unscrew the whole thing, take the top half off. Now the key to getting the top half of this filter off is one of these pegs fits directly into one of these holes. Doesn't matter which one, you put it right in, you twist it to get it open, and hopefully I won't get covered by water. Of course, I've been doing this for a while, so I know that there's enough water drained out. And now we have the cartridge. So if you look very close at this cartridge, it's actually full of seeds and you know, grass and pine needles and all sorts of different stuff that's gonna you know, prevent the flow of the pool at some point. The next thing you can do is take this cartridge out and hose it off, which we'll show you in a second. But another thing you can do if you don't feel like taking this out is you can leave this cartridge right in the basin, keep that drain plug out completely and just clean the whole thing right here and it'll all drain right out the side of the pool. Personally, I like to take this thing out, just wiggle it loose, let the excess water drain out, take it out, put it right on the ground, grab a hose and rinse the whole thing off. Now, the manufacturer says to use a hose to get all this stuff off. After owning one of these pools myself, like I said, for 10 years now, the best investment you can make besides a pair of giant vice grips is a small $150 power washer and it'll keep these things brand new for about four years. I also recommend getting a second one so you could just put the clean one in after you take the dirty one out, rinse this off, put it in the garage, and then you're good to go. I also have another video of me cleaning the uh, cartridge filter with my power washer, which is one of my favorite things in the world to do, believe it or not. Uh, it takes all of 60 seconds to two minutes. Uh, it's a small amount of work. You put it back in and then you're good to go. If you let this thing sit for a whole entire year, and I've had customers actually not clean these because they don't have any uh, trees in their yard and they only have to clean it once a year. If you have trees, you get a lot of this debris and this stuff, which isn't really the big deal. The big deal is the dirt that gets inside these pleats. And that's why a power washer does such a great job. If you have a powerful power washer, don't get it right up to the pleats and destroy it and rip it apart. Just take your time and start, you know, out uh, about four feet away and get as close as you have to to make sure the whole thing really, um, you know, is able to be cleaned. Now on the top here, we have a little air relief net that actually directs all the air that's going to be in these pleats up through this, uh, this release nozzle here. And this is directly under the air release valve when we go to prime the system and put it back in. It's such a small, minute part but it's very important that this stays on. And again, if you ever lose these things, you can get them on Amazon or from us. Uh, it's really cheap, but you wanna make sure that's always there. All right, so now that we have the whole filter drained and we'll clean this in a minute, I wanna direct you to the skimmer basket on the pump. Now to open these, you just go counterclockwise. And if I just try and loosen it, it's actually loose and um, you know, it, it works pretty good, but sometimes when these are really locked into place, you have to just give it a little tap to get the thing loose. Because I didn't drain all the water out of here, a little bit of water is gonna come out, which isn't a big deal. And you really just wanna take this basket out, get all the crud out of there, and depending on the seeds and stuff that are in there, they might stick in there and you might have to go wash it out a little bit. and then make sure the whole thing is kind of clean and rinsed off. Now it's very, very important that when you put this back in, the hole here is lined up exactly with the hole where the water comes in and there's a little groove where there's a spike that comes out, a plastic spike, where this is gonna fit right into place so you know you have it right in place. All the stuff's out of there and then I'm gonna take this uh, skimmer basket lid and put it back on. Now keep in mind, this lid is comprised of two parts, three parts really, a uh, plastic part, an outside part, an inside part, and then the most important part, which is this O-ring right here. I've never seen this thing come off, 
but if you ever take O-rings out of any part of this filter system, just make sure you put it somewhere or put it back on. So I'm gonna put this lid back in place. Doesn't matter which direction it goes on, you push it down, find where it grabs, and then lock it in place. It'll stop once you get there. So we got the cartridge, we got the skimmer basket, and now we're gonna talk about the chlorinator. So the chlorinator, believe it or not, works much like the um, filter basin itself. It's just a smaller version of that that holds chlorine. Now on the top here, we have an air relief valve, just like we have for the tank. And then on the dial here, you'll see, um, well, usually there's numbers here that are one through five, or one through 10, excuse me. On this one, it looks like the sticker wasn't put on. So when you run this pool with the chlorine, you wanna make sure the setting is always, ha this dial is halfway up, which is the center. This is to um, have the most chlorine possible, would be all the way down. And then the pack removal, there's also a, a sticker here that's gonna say pack removal. Now when you put it on pack removal, it prevents water from coming back into the system. You open up the air relief valve here. And then this wrench, which also you don't want to lose, just slides on. And again, sometimes it's going to be tight because it's a brand new pool. You just give it a little push and this whole thing will open right up. And then you'll see what's inside. So just like the uh, pump skimmer cap, there's an O-ring on the inside of here, and any of these O-rings prevent water from leaking out. So if you see any leaks on the system, usually it's because an O-ring is missing, and you might get a little water that leaks out here, but all you really have to do is check to make sure there's chlorine tablets still in here, which there is. Make sure that it's lined up when you put it back in. It's pretty easy to see. And then this outside cartridge is the mineral, mineral cartridge that takes care of all the other chemicals other than chlorine. And you just wanna replace this once a year. And like I said, this is replaced as soon as it's empty. So as soon as you kind of get an idea of how long this is gonna last, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you wanna get in the habit of making sure you have a new one handy. And then you just wanna push this cartridge right back into place. It's okay if a little water spills out. Put the cap back on. Make sure it's threaded properly, which is another very important thing. You don't want to misthread these things at all. And you'll feel when it's on right. Usually hand tightening is tight enough. I'll just give it a little extra push. Leave this air relief valve open because we want it to fill back out with water before we um, you know, leave here to make sure the system is primed. And that is literally all the work that you have to do to this pool, maybe once every three to four weeks. So it took me about 20 minutes to explain this. If I'm doing this without explaining it, I'm getting it done in about seven or eight minutes, uh, maybe even less than that because I've been doing this for a long time. Um, it's not a lot of work, guys. And as long as you keep up with it, it's very simple. Like I said, if you ever get stuck, you can give us a call and we'll walk you through it. But this should really show you um, every part of the system and, uh, you know, the small amount of work that's required to make sure these pools are running clean for as long as possible. All right, so we're gonna rinse this off real quick. Like I said, we have a hose and it's gonna get most of this out because it's a new pool. But the best way you can do this, and again, there's another video on my channel here, is to get a small power washer and do it that way. But this will do most of the job. So you really just wanna make sure you go around the whole thing and get out as much of this stuff as you can. Like I said, it takes a little bit longer with a hose, but still able to do the job. It's just that after a year or two, some of the dirt will start to settle in these pools and in these filter cartridges, and it's much easier to get the stuff out with a power washer. So on top of the fact that there's a set of outside pleats, it's very important that you get the inside ring as well. And just make sure everything comes out of there as much as you can get. And that's a month's worth of work on a cartridge filter in about 60 seconds. So 
Underneath this cartridge, directly in line with the uh, air relief cap here, is a big round circle where the water comes in, and this needs to line up directly with that check valve that I showed you. Now the beautiful thing about this check valve is, like I said, this is what prevents the flow of water back into the pool from the return side. So you're gonna take the whole thing, drop it in nice and gentle, try and line it up, and just wiggle it around till you find the right place. And then you'll feel when it sets right into place. Sometimes it takes a second. Make sure it's nice and snug. snug. The next thing you're gonna do is take the cap. Now I've found that the handles that line up, if you line them up so they kind of face towards the pump like this, perpendicular, and you press it down to make sure it's completely flat, you're ready to put the ring back on. Something that's incredibly important in this step that can't be overlooked is after you push this cap into place, there's gonna be a line here where the two halves meet. Now this line has to be completely tight. If there's any gap here, then that posi lock ring is not gonna go on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grab the ring, put it on top, kind of go backwards first to find the thread, and it should go nice and smooth. Now, when you get to the end of this thing, turning in place and locking, you should hear a, a distinct click. If you do not hear that click and it grinds to a halt, this thing is not on properly and the water is just going to leak out of here continually. You're going to have to drain the whole thing and do it again. So you'll notice, and I know because I've, I've done many of these, you're going to hear a, a really loud click when I lock this into place. That's how you know that the half is on tight and that no water is going to come out. So we've got our uh, cartridge back inside. We've got our posi lock ring on. We've got our um, chlorine cartridge in place. And now we're ready to reprime the system. Both of our vent air release valves are open still. This one and this one over here. And the next thing we're going to do is take our ball valve, open it up so that all the water is coming back up. And immediately you're going to hear this air relief valve start hissing here. And the whole thing's going to start filling with water. And it's going to basically go from here and go up and up and up until it gets to the top and then water is going to squirt if you want to come over here out of this air relief valve to let you know that it's full. Now you can sit here and let gravity do its job but because I'm a bit impatient and I want to get this thing running I'm going to turn the pump on until water squirts out of here and I just want to make sure it's almost tight so I don't get blasted in the face by water when it's ready to go. You'll notice all the air blow back into the pool, which is a good sign. All the air is clearing through the lines. The water comes out. I only got a little bit wet. I guess that's about average. And then on top of that, the water is also coming out of the air release valve of the chlorinator, which means that's full. I'm going to close that. Now both parts of the system are primed. I look into the clear lid of the skimmer here. There's no air, it's completely full, and we are good to go. Now, if you see a little water dripping off the side here of the filter, don't be alarmed. It's just the water from the air release valve coming out and leaking out. After all this stuff kind of dries up, uh, you'll be able to tell if you ever have any leaks or not. And any leaks that you ever have in any of these connections that have these ridges on them, can easily be tightened with a pair of vice grips that I showed you earlier in the video. And that's literally all you have to do for this pool to keep it going. Now, another way you can tell when it's time to clean this cartridge is on top of the tank here, if you come to this side, we have a pressure gauge. Now these pressure gauges usually start out around anywhere from 10 to 15 uh, pounds of pressure. And it's gonna go all the way up to 20 to 23 when the cartridge is full of junk and it's time to clean it out. Another way to tell if it's time to clean your cartridge is to simply put your hand in the pool in front of the return and feel how strong the pressure is. If it ever feels like you're not getting enough water flow, the very first thing you should do is clean out the cartridge and more times than not you'll find that 
once the cartridge is cleaned, especially with a power washer, it's gonna be like it was the day you bought it. And that is all you have to do for this pool once every three weeks to a month. And as long as you do that, you'll have a crystal clear pool, no problems, and uh, as little maintenance as anybody could have for a pool.